Greetings, loved ones. Let's take a chance. It's time for Amanda, <laughs> Amanda Exclusivo. Exclusivo. You guys, I'm so excited about my guest today. We have Atticus Schaefer here. Hi, Atticus. Hello. How are you? I'm doing so well. I'm doing so well. Thank you for having me on here. This You're is such a blessing fun and for me. festive today. As I thank you, see. thank you. Yes, Easter decorations. He is risen. <laughs> <laughs> so, how has life been like for you during quarantine? What have you been up to? I hear the peeping in the background, so I got to ask yes. about the chicks. Yes, the peeping in the background here. Let's see if one of them will behave. Hi, you know why? Oh my God! Do they all have different names? Yes. Look. <gasps> Who's this? This Hi. this doesn't have a name. Uh, we we don't have names for them yet, but we we kind of we pick oh. them out as as their personalities develop. But this is a little silky chick, a little silky bantam chick oh. that we hatched ourselves. So, really? Yes. Yeah, so mom got some fertilized eggs and uh, we hatched them up. The that one is actually from Louisiana, which is pretty cool. So yeah, that's our little Southern chicks. We have about six of them here. And um, that's just something my mom has been passionate about. But as far as lockdown is concerned, I mean, it was a, it was a wonderful awakening and demonstration that we who are in the entertainment industry are not like segregated from the rest of the world. And Hollywood got shut down. So what I ended up doing is I turned to wanting to build my own uh, production company. And I'm doing that through content creation via YouTube and Twitch. So that's been what's keeping me busy for the most part. That's awesome. And for those of us that don't know about your YouTube channel, can you tell us a bit about it and what you like to do besides seeing videos of birds? <laughs> yes, of course. No, it's uh, my, so my YouTube and my Twitch are both Atticus Schaefer vlog with a V. And I started my YouTube channel a long time ago, actually, when I was still on the show. And it was purely because I wanted to make a humorous video of me eating a Cupid's chili dog. Because <laughs> just because of the fact that I was on the show, it would get a lot of views. So I literally sat there, it's five minutes long, and it's me eating a Cupid's chili dog. And Cupid's is this big thing out here in the West Coast of hot dogs. And so it's kind of to this area and everything. It blew up. Everybody loved it. And the thought was absolutely hilarious. I had this one guy call it comedy gold, which I was like, wow, thank you. <laughs> you know. Uh, from there, I, I really have been wanting to use it to be a positive place, a nice community for people to come by and hang out. So I've done everything from like Christian talks as a, as a young man and a young man in the industry to, um, you know, what's been going on in the world with COVID to short films that I've made. To... Tell us about the short films. What short films did you do? So when I was, when I was a bit younger, I knew, well, okay. So this is the story that I always tell back in season six of the show, the show almost ended. And the reason why is that. because Charlie McDermott, yeah, Charlie McDermott, he got a, um, a pilot and uh, he wanted to go do the pilot because he wanted to branch out and do different things. But if he got it and he did it and it sold, it would have had a conflict with our show because he couldn't just up and leave. So there was a big hoopla about, okay, can we get locked in for the next season and know that we're going to come back? And it lasted like the last three months of season six. Little oh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I hear and I'm loving it <laughs> nice this is my this is my life beat is them just peeping um so uh no so so that situation came up and when that happened I had always been big and and my mom instilled this in me of hey the show's successful this is awesome but it's never gonna last forever no show except for the Simpsons can just go in perpetuity right well, there's Family Guy too, Atticus. But. Well, you, this is true. So, okay. There's only, I can count on one hand the number of shows that will. Exactly. I understand what you mean. Duty. Yeah, for sure. Because me, little Atticus, I can't be a little Maggie and just stay a baby forever. <laughs> so, no, but it, it was a situation where when that happened, it was like, wow, okay. I almost was out of work. What do we do now? And then I started thinking about future. And when I started thinking about future, I started to sit back and go, okay, well, what am I qualified to do? And then what do I enjoy doing? And I love telling a good story. I love being creative and, and telling stories from all mediums, not just as an actor. So I started my journey of wanting to kind of create my own production company and make my own content. So there, there's actually a presidential library out in Simi Valley here in California for Ronald Reagan. 
And because he was in the industry, they have a film program there where you go and you can get stock footage from the National Archives and make short films with it, documentary films with it. So I did that twice. I, I did two films and they have a film festival. I won best edited and best overall with my projects. Congratulations. Thank you so much. So I was like, oh, I guess I am good at this. Well, okay, this is something to work towards then. So then it became this thing of, of a passion. So I slowly started to grow and do more research, do more learning, start to do other things. So I, I've done a couple of documentary films, which are up there. And then I actually also, because I'm big into gaming and I figured, well, let's tie in gaming with, with uh, the channel and then my streaming on Twitch. I, uh, I made a couple short films when The Last of Us Part Two was coming out. That game had a lot of hype. And I just said to myself, hmm, what's something I can do with me as the one actor and my mom as the director of photography? And I did, I came up with, I came up with we two. We love having a momager, I understand. Absolutely, absolutely. Listen, man, my mom, my mom has a very good eye for composition. So man, I, she's, she's awesome. She's my publicity photographer, my DP, you know, she, it's great. So I love that. That's incredible. Yeah, Does your mom play on Twitch too, or she doesn't? No, no, she doesn't play on uh-huh. Twitch. She's not big into video games, but she's big into other art. So like she loves movies, TV. Uh, I mean, God, she's an amazing artist and writer. Um, and then she does this. So her thing is, you know, the little making life happen. So baby chicks or the garden <laughs> and feeding the birds and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's beautiful. And she gave me such a rich childhood growing up and an, an ability to appreciate a lot of different types of art, which I'm very thankful for. So yeah, so when, when uh, I, you know, COVID happened, I, I was able to start to do that. And that's kind of where the short films are, are at now. And then now it's a lot harder because there's so many more COVID restrictions. So you have to yeah. play with that. So if I wanted to get bigger with that, you know, I have to play around with it. But once I find the right project, it's going to be something I pursue. Oh, that's awesome. But let's go back to Twitch for one second. So tell me, um, how do you I, tell yeah. your fans when you're going live on Twitch and what games do you like to play? So it's, it's actually really fun. I've gotten into... This is going to sound so dorky, but in a sense, it's like modeling, but it's really just an excuse for me to play dress up. So what I'll do is I collect a bunch of like military history pieces or costume pieces or whatever. And I do a lot of like thrift store shopping with my mom. And so we find interesting things. And what ends up happening is I have this stuff and then I get dressed up for whatever the theme of the game is. And then I'll take a picture of it, publicize it on Instagram. Um, I usually have a schedule, which is great. So I do, I I go live every Monday and Wednesday at 3.30 Pacific, every Saturday at 1 Pacific. And um, having that schedule has been really nice. It's been a lot of fun. And really, I just go with what's interesting. So I'm a big zombie nerd, but I also am such a guy and I love action, you know, so I love things like Escape from Tarkov and PUBG and Call of Duty. And so I kind of, I'll, I'll vary things up with that. And then I also engage the audience. So I've, I've made quite a few friends just from forming this community. And so I'll turn to them. Hey, what's an awesome independent game? Oh, hey, try this. Try Super Hot. This is a cool puzzle piece in game and it has action. Try this. This is an indie game, but it's really good. They made it right. You know, stuff like that. So it ends up, it ends up, uh, it, it ends up kind of, I'm making my own network is essentially the goal. That's awesome. Well, you've already had a fan base before you started going on Twitch. Let's talk about the middle. Yes. Yes. Chris Heck, Atticus, is one of the best television characters ever. That's awesome. Oh, thank you so much. I love him so much. I started (laughs) binging the middle during COVID. And let me tell you, you brought so much laughter into my home. And my family's like, you got to watch. And I sat there and ever since I watched Eden Share go swimming in the pool in the pilot, I'm like, okay, I have to continue watching. And then this was my reaction, Atticus, to finding out I was going to interview you. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> I was so excited. So tell me, why did you, <laughs> I don't know if anyone's ever done that for you while interviewing. <laughs> they haven't. You are the first. I mean, I, I like to bless the world by dance. So I. Yes, clearly. You know, Clearly. I have some similarities to Sue, but tell I me receive how- it. I <laughs> receive it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but tell me, how did you land the gig of playing Brick Heck on the Middle? Of course, everything has a story with me. And with, with this one, this is probably one of the best stories that I've had in the industry. So a lot of people don't know there was actually a first pilot before the one that was aired. And Ooh. it had a completely different cast except me. Wow. I was the only one to be brought back. Yeah. 
So that was a situation where I was eight at the time that I did that first pilot. And the audition process for that was like three months long, uh, a bunch of callbacks, a bunch of screen testing, pairing me up with different people. How is this going to look? Whatever. Um, the original Frankie was Ricky Lake and the really? dad was Lex Meth. Yes. Yeah. And then the, uh, Sue was a, a young lady from Vancouver. And um, I, I forget where the gentleman who played the original Axel was, but Charlie actually auditioned to be Axel in the first run as well. He didn't was get Neil it. Flynn always always there or no? Oh, no. A gentleman named Lex Medlin played Mike. Uh, Lex Medlin, he did a lot of the Time Warner cable commercials there for a while. Oh, wow. So it was an entirely yeah. different cast before entirely all different five cast. of you got in. Chris Kattan wasn't involved. Brian Doyle Murray wasn't involved. None of that. Wow. And so it was a situation where we went in and it was amazingly fun and we believed in the project, but it just didn't quite feel right. And then about a year later, I get a call from my manager saying, hey, Eileen Heisler and Dean Helene want to go to go to brunch with you. I'm like nine and a half. So I'm like, oh, brunch, this is fancy. So they take <laughs> me there and they, and they ascend, you know, I go down to Burbank and we go get some breakfast and they essentially say, we got another shot at being, at making the pilot happen and we cannot make it without you because you were brick. Will you please come back and be brick? And I'm sitting there like, oh, yeah. Of course I will. <laughs> and it, it was just this amazing experience of being able to do it again. And when we did it again, there was an absolute certainty that we were going to keep going forward. We just felt it, the family, the, the crew, how, how um, uh, the director, Julianne Robinson, how she crafted the story, everything. It just, we knew the strength of what we had. And then everything just, you know, took off from there on the grand adventure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta ask, do you and Brick share any similarities? Are you as obsessed with reading and, you know, wearing the striped shirts, stripes on stripes? Am I as obsessed with reading? <laughs> Let's take a look. <laughs> so well, I'm gonna go with the yes. That was, that was a great yes. answer. Thank you. Good. This is why I, I stream in this room and this is like my office. Um, no, you know, it's funny because the, a lot of people ask me this and it's a very valid question. When I first came into the role of Brick, he's very loosely based on the creator of the show, Eileen Heisler's, her son, Justin, very loosely based. But it was really me working with directors and then other writers as we crafted the episodes and the stories that made Brick who he was. So Sergeant McKinsey came from me, Lego came from me, the, the loving history came from me. 90% uh, of what made Brick who he is came from me. They came up with, with like the whisper and the whoop and then the, he loves reading in the font cast, that's about it. But it, how they applied it is what matters, right? And Br that's what made Brick so much fun for me because what I've always loved about Brick is not the fact that he's a quirky character. I love his quirks. He shows it's okay to have those quirks. And that's what I love about him. He marches to the beat of his own drummer. He doesn't need to, you know, get this iPhone case or, or uh, you know, be in this in crowd. He did he not have iPad one time, so... But, but it went awry because he got too much information. That's like, that's like me all the time on the internet. I'm constantly like, no, scroll through this. I don't want to know. <laughs> but uh, but it, it is. He and I are very much alike. Now, I mean, obviously we're two different people. I believe in different things compared to I'm sure he would. But the way that the character is and, and how he was made, he's a character I was proud to be. And, and I'm so thankful that he's a character that many people like you can identify with and enjoy. He's incredible. And so is the entire family. So how, how does the middle family compare to your family? What do you, what do you love most? Or is there anything different? You know, well, we, we were together for that period of time. Yeah, um, the, the unfortunate thing, and this is, long time. right. Um, this is the unfortunate thing. This is me. I'm, I'm going in honest mode, putting on the honest hand. Okay. Uh, um, when you are in the industry, a lot of people think it's incredibly glamorous and it's all this and all that. In ways it is. There's things that I was able to do and awesome people I was able to meet like Morgan Freeman and Bill Murray, who is like, wow, this is really cool. I got to meet these people. <laughs> and, you know, I haven't washed my hands since, since shaking theirs. And but, Betty White uh, too, right? Cause she was right? a guest star in the episode. Oh, absolutely. Betty White, Marion Ross, Brooke Shields. I mean, I'm, I'm a big history nerd. So even Rick Harrison from Pawn Stars when he was on the <laughs> show was like, oh my God, you're amazing. I love you, man. Um, but it, 
there's a lot of stuff that of course is difficult. And the, the very unfortunate thing is people don't, number one, there's a lot of stereotypes to being in the industry that unfortunately people have applied to me that just are not true. The internet does not help with that when people can just like this put out false information. But then also to people view you in a different way. So I was never close with the majority of my family prior to the show. Then all of a sudden I get these people coming out of the woodwork that are like, oh, I'm your long lost cousin Drake. And uh, can you loan me $200,000 so I can start an exercise of that? So I'm not close with my real family, essentially. It's mom and I, and that's just how the cookie crumbled with that. And, and are you an only child, Atticus? No, I have an older brother, but he he moved up to uh, Washington State. So he's he's been up there. He's on his own journey. So... <laughs> So you kind of are an only child. I mean, it's just you. Essentially. I'm an yeah. only child as well. So I, I understand. Where you get it. <laughs> for sure. For sure. But you know, I'm sure like with you, your parents absolutely just lavish on you because you're, you're, you're the baby, you know, you're the only that's kid. True. That's so, kind that's of true. Nice. Not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. When mom cooks food, little Atticus gets to have seconds. I don't have to share with my brother. So <laughs> there you go. Versus if you yeah. were in the middle, you'd have to share with Eden and Charlie. Oh yeah. It's not even mom's stuff. cooking. Oh yeah. No, it's not even mom's cooking. I have to did sit there and be like. Did you eat frosting as much as Frankie Heck did or did you have. Uh, you know, I ate my equivalent of frosting. I really did. I had a lot of Snickers bars and Dr. Pepper. I was, I was, it was not a that house. Oh Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, lots of chips, lots of, lots of candy, lots of soda, and then I I'd, I'd guzzle Arrowhead water. <laughs> That's hysterical. That was actually the thing though. Is is crafty is a real thing. When when the show was ending, we obviously knew. So for like a month afterward, I was like, crafty is just gonna throw all this stuff away, and I don't want to have to shop. So I'm just gonna start taking cases of water. <laughs> Did you get to keep anything from set before you all exited for the finale? If so, well, do you have any special props that fans might recognize? Yes. Yeah, so um, it's not that I was necessarily supposed to, but mm -hmm. I did take um, the last outfit that Brick wore. So the gray pants and the yellow striped shirt that he wore in that final scene when they're driving off. <laughs> I, uh, I took Brick's lawn chair. And then I took, uh, I took my, this one I did get permission to take. I took the middle set chair that was mine. So it had my name on it. And then on the back, it said the middle. Uh, I was able to take that. So that I was have to cool. ask you, did you feel a sense of accomplishment when you got the regular chair so that you fit in with everyone else at the table? Or do you still miss the old lounge chair? <laughs> Listen, I did. I was proud be, of you. I was be, very proud you. of you. Thank you. I, I will take that. I, I was very thankful as an actor because the lawn chair was not as comfortable as it seemed. So to be able to sit on a padded chair at the table was like, ah, we made it. We're good. You made it. I was very proud of you. During that episode, I was like, yes, Brick gets the chair. He graduated. I'm so proud of him. <laughs> Thank you. Because <laughs> that's an iconic moment, you know? Absolutely. After Absolutely. X amount of years, Frankie forgot about the chair. And I'm like, come on, come on. Right. Got Throw the phone. The chair. For what sure. I love too, you mentioned the finale. How did it feel? Because you had the last word in it. You whispered the middle. Yes. So how did that feel having the last word in throughout the entire show? It was the epitome of like the honor is mine like I could I could envision the the grandmaster samurai passing me off the sword and saying you're one of us now it was just such an amazing moment um it, it's actually funny because a lot of thought went into that episode it, it's very clear but we were we actually took that last episode and we filmed it over the course of two weeks which was wonderful because we got to take our time with every scene and the days weren't chaotic we would just okay here's what we're doing today let's make it the best Here's what we're doing today. Let's make it the best. And it, what ended up happening is we had a majorly short day on the last day. Like I'm talking, it might've been four hours of work and that's it, which is unheard of. And we went in and we filmed the last scene, the interior of the car last. That was the very last thing that we did. So we wrapped the heck house like three days prior. We were just doing green screen stuff. And so when we did that scene, it was very poetic because the director of that episode, she did the majority of the episodes in the show. She did the second episode, the one with the pool on Lee Shalichamel. And what ended up happening is she came up to the car. They got the, they got the cameras all set up. They were shooting it as a one-er, meaning it's one take because there's no dialogue. Right, one, right, one. 
And she, yeah, exactly. So she comes up and she, she opens up the car door on Patty's side because Patty was in the passenger seat. We're all in the back and then Neil's up front with Patty. And she says, okay, this camera here is a wide of all of you. This camera here is a close on the kids. This camera here is a close on you, Patty. We're gonna do this as a oneer. When I say action, we're gonna just ponder for 45 seconds what we have been through in the past nine and a half, 10 years. Hold on to that. We said, okay. She shuts the door, you know, the whole spiel of, uh, of uh, rolling sound speed, a mark, clack, 45 seconds, cut, check it. And then everybody started applauding. It was such an emotional, beautiful, like, <gasps> we did it type of thing. No, yeah, I, I missed the show so much. I wish that there was a spinoff. But <laughs> I, <laughs> but I want to know, since mostly you've been focusing on uh, your own brand, as you were saying, YouTube and yes. Twitch, what's next for you? Are you going to consider returning to the big screens anytime, maybe? <laughs> Absolutely. If big screens open up again, I actually, know. it's, it's fun, right. You know, it's funny because actually I have done uh, quite a bit of voiceover work, which I'm very thankful for. Uh, voiceover is much easier to do because I'm isolated in a booth and, and the directors can be at home. And it's, I just, it's just me and a sound engineer. So we can social distance and do all that stuff. So I'm still on Adventures and Odyssey. I've, there's a movie that's coming out on Netflix, animated movie that's coming out this year. Um, I did several voices in that. I'm on a new Disney show that's going to be airing, I believe, Ooh. this year. So, yeah. <laughs> I can't say because I don't oh, know. If I'm a huge Disney fan. Then. All right, I'll just find out when the world does. Right, exactly. But I'm one of the I'm one of the villains in that show, which is a lot of fun. So I'm enjoying that. I know, a little spicy. But actually, you know, one of the things that I am working on, and, and the whole point of the content creation is to build my production company so I can do other things. But one of my goals, and I actually really haven't said this to anybody, so you're the first. I'm honored. I dance <laughs> you're telling me this, so I'm very honored, Atticus. You are awesome. You are so sweet. Um, no, but I have I have an idea for a animated show that I want to show run. So it's a matter of you know getting it written, getting the kinks worked out, etc. But it's going to be very interesting. It pays homage to a huge area of my life, um, and when that does finally come about, uh, I'm going to be excited to make that happen. Well, I I'm going to have you come back on, and we can talk please. about it. Please, I would love, I would love to, to have you come bring, promote that. Bring, bring me back anytime. You're like so super awesome. So. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I'm so excited. Well, before you go, Atticus, I yes. was wondering if we could play a game. Sure. Ooh, so okay. it's called the speed round, okay? Okay. So basically I'm going to ask you as many questions as I can until the time's up. I'll be looking at the timer. And, okay. Um, we've had uh some some pretty good people do the speed round my record i was wrong and i want to make an apology to ben feldman from superstore who i interviewed <laughs> i was wrong about the number so ben feldman the record was actually ben higgins he had 14 ben higgins is from the bachelor okay um, i interviewed him and i lied to ben feldman and i told him that james roday that i interviewed got 20. So I want to make a public apology to Ben Feldman that I'm sorry <laughs> that I told you the wrong record. So maybe Atticus can beat Ben Higgins. <laughs> Ooh, how many do I have to beat? 14? Yeah, 14. All right. So All right. don't worry. The questions are very easy. It's going to be about you. Okay. Okay. Oh my. Oh no. All right. Tell me when you're ready and I will start okay. the timer. Let's see. Let, if me, you let, me, let me compose myself. Go for it. All right, timer starts now. Pac-Man or Asteroids? Pac-Man. Your favorite game on Twitch? Escape from Tarkov. Axel or Sue? Neither. <laughs> favorite Donahue? The dog. <laughs> Your favorite book? To Kill a Mockingbird. Your favorite snack? Snack? snack. Rich crackers with peanut butter. What's your favorite kind of bagel? Egg. Okay. Go hens or Orson Cow? Orson Cow. Your favorite board game? Trouble. TikTok, yay or nay? Nay. Xbox or PlayStation? PlayStation. 
Frankie or Mike? Are you more, which one are you more like? Am I more like? Oh yes. God, hopefully neither. Okay. <laughs> Coffee or tea? Coffee. One more. Whoop or whisper? Whisper. Oh, it's like, wow. You How many was lied. that? 14. How many was that? What, was it really? Yeah. Mm. Yes. <laughs> You did very well. I had extra questions for you, but nice. Um, you you did very well, Atticus. I'm very thank proud you. of you. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> uh, thank you so much. <laughs>